Okay. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties today. I'm excited. We've got some good questions and I want to give you an update on my book. Let me show you this. Jack, let me show you this first. So we have had, and let me actually do something else as well. Let me turn this on. There we go. So you can still see me. No, oh, I've got my logo over my face. Um, all right. So we've had a, a complete redesign of the book. And, uh, but the book is complete. The book is complete and shipping should start this next week. If not, then, then the following week. So no more delays on that. Really excited about it. Um, in fact, what I was going to show you now is let me show you the interior. This is so exciting. So uh, each chapter is actually its own uh, unique color. So chapter one is red. And we get into chapter two. Oh, where am I? There we go. Chapter two is the blue chapter. So all the in interior is blue. Then we go to a kind of a yellowy gold. It looks, looks a little extra bright, but it will look better on paper. Um, anyway, so we've got a lot, all brand new graphics. Um, so anyway, really excited about that. And um, now let's jump right in to the questions. All right. So question number one is from Jalissa or Jalisa. Um, do you incorporate YouTube shorts into, in, into any of your clients' channel strategies? Um, shorts are interesting. We've been experimenting a lot with them over the, the past year. Uh, early this year, our shorts were falling flat. Um, now we, we can get traction on shorts. I've got some of my clients that, are, that have had shorts get you know, into the millions of views. Um, but what's interesting is it really hasn't affected their lead generation. It hasn't really, you know, their, their YouTube leads, it really hasn't grown their YouTube channel in terms of subscribers like we would have thought. That's what a lot of uh, other YouTube channels are using them for, um, but I'm finding it not working for this strategy. And so let me just kind of paint the picture of the different. Most YouTube channel strategies out there focus on ad revenue and sponsorships. These are entertaining channels. And shorts, just like TikTok, is a really entertaining medium. People aren't searching for it. This isn't, you know, so the whole strategy that I teach is based on uh, searches, people searching for your expertise. People don't find shorts through search. I mean, you can, you can search and a short can come up for it, uh, but that's typically not the way people find shorts, if that makes sense. Um, so what I recommend is you can certainly uh, use shorts as a part of your strategy. I recommend experimenting. Um, and some of the things that I'm saying, we're not really seeing as much results. There are exceptions to that, but we can't really find a, a system yet. Um, and so it's worth experimenting. Shorts are, are fun. Um, one thing that I have found is the shorts that I make that are dedicated shorts, like I film it with the intent of it being a short, those perform better as opposed to me filming a full 10 minute episode and then saying, ooh, let me take this piece of it and turn that into a short and take this piece of it and turn that into a short. Though some, you know, there are exceptions. Some of those do perform well, but on uh, kind of on the norm, the majority of the time, the shorts that I consci consciously think about and create thinking, ooh, I wanna create this uh, as a short, those tend to perform better. Okay, so the second question from Jalis Jalisa, is do you believe in starting a brand new YouTube channel for someone who has switched niches or niches? Um, they're not related, uh, changing from fitness to entrepreneurship and women or women empowerment. Um, so yes, you definitely want to start a brand new channel when you're completely changing audiences. Um, I've talked about that on previous Q and A's. So if you want a kind of a more detailed answer on that, I'd recommend going and, and listening or watching to the, the previous Q&A conversations on that. But, but the main reason is the audience is different. If you've got a fitness audience and then you're changing to an entrepreneurship, the people that came to you looking for fitness advice, now you're talking about entrepreneurship. It doesn't make sense. But if you launch a brand new channel, you can succeed in both. Okay, so question number two or three from Megan, Megan Will, Willhood, Wildhood, cool. I like that name. The concern I have is with how fast things move these days, filming even just 
a month ahead can make content outdated, right? Um, it depends. And my strategy, no, it doesn't. Um, but she's watched some of my videos, obviously. I've definitely been able to tell when a YouTuber has batched content and it turns me off to that channel. Okay, I would challenge that. I would challenge that you cannot tell the date. Um, I mean, so many YouTubers will wear the same outfit every single episode. And like, um, oh, what's that channel that, uh, it's a comedy channel. Um, I can't think of it. They are a daily show and you cannot tell. Like in my mind, I'm like, if they're smart, they're batching this every week or every couple of weeks. Um, but they change their outfits and they do, they do things. Um, anyway, I would challenge that you could really tell, like, if people make it obvious, if th there's probably something else that, what's the words that use, that turned you off. There's probably something else that turned you off about it. It's not the batch. Like when you follow my strategy, um, we're not focusing on uh, relevant, like timely, is that the word timely content or how come I can't think of the word? Um, uh, I'm on live stream. I can't pause like this because you can't edit out those pauses. Um, I don't focus on this type of content. Um, current events, why, why can't I think of the word, but current events will work. If there's current events, you can't really batch that. Or if there's a specific, you know, I'm trying to think of the word. I'm just going to, just going to give up on that. The type of content that I have taught you how to create is evergreen. It really is evergreen. And she mentions the word here. I don't think it's possible or helpful to only do evergreen content. How do you recommend dealing with lag times and possible outdated material by batch filming? Well, we just have a difference of opinion there because for the first year, I 100% recommend that you focus on this evergreen content, specifically my leaf strategy, because you have a guaranteed built-in audience. You can make timely content, you can make, and I'm trying to find that word again, you can make content that is current, right? Let's say a politician does something or somebody in pop culture does something or something in your industry happens and you want to make a video and talk about it, okay? Um, you can make a video about that topic, put it on YouTube, and you don't have a guaranteed audience. Most likely, you're going to fall flat. You're going to get zero views. But if you follow my leaf strategy, every episode you put on YouTube will get a trickle of traffic that's the right traffic meaning people that are likely to hire you, people that are likely to buy from you. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, Megan, you probably don't fully understand the strategy. The entire month of December 2022, all 22 episodes teach my strategy. Also, my book, shout out for my book, this thing right here, uh, A Hero's Guide to Influence on YouTube. You can get it for free, free plus, oh, and I... What did I do? I got to turn this off so you can actually see it. Um, free plus shipping. You just pay the shipping and printing costs and I don't make any profit on it. I'm just going to give you that book for free. It is a physical book. It's paperback. Um, the hardcover will be coming soon. That will be sold on Amazon. But if you want a free copy of this book, teaching my entire strategy, uh, go to natesyoutubebook.com and that's where you get this book. Okay, let's go to the next question. Uh, Lamika, uh, how, I've, I've tried to purchase your book. However, I keep getting an error message and that wasn't a plant. I mean, I planted the question. Yes. Um, but it's a real question and I didn't time it that way on purpose, but it worked out. Um, hopefully things are fixed. We have had a, have you ever heard of Infusionsoft now known as keep, <laughs> uh, over the past six months, it's been a nightmare to set up the funnel the way that I want to be able to do a free plus shipping offer and things. Um, Keep or Infusionsoft is supposed to be the best of the best of the best. It, it's just a nightmare. They have three different versions. Uh, sorry, this is a little bit of a rant. Um, they have three different versions and you sign up for one version, but you're missing some other features. And so you're like, all right, I'll upgrade. I'll, I'll get to the, the, sorry, my, there's a little alarm going off. Hopefully it stops. Okay. The, uh, and you probably couldn't hear it, but it was just annoying to me. So you get the upgraded version and guess what? There's still uh, a version, uh, an old, an outdated version 
that has the feature that I want. And I'm like, ah, oh, so I have to give up some of these. So I'm like, let's just try it. Let's go over to that. Okay, we get this new, we get this feature that was on the old system, but now we just lost all these other features. You know what? Let's find another tool. Let's go back to the original version. I don't expect you to have followed that. It was just a nightmare. We've, we've gone through uh, even different programs like Shopify and whatnot. Um, we're going back to WordPress. Uh, we have gone back to WordPress and um, we're just going to be able to control everything so we can do it the right way. And so um, we've, we've had some errors and lots of, lots of challenges. This stuff isn't that complicated, but um, some of the things that we want to do, I guess, are complicated. Okay, so uh, Anonymous was also concerned about the book. I was willing to be patient due to Christmas. However, I found another person all th that has also not gotten their book for even longer. If you are legit, Nate, please respond with a plan to get a book to me or how to refund my money. So first of all, I haven't sold any books. I'm giving away my books for free. So what this no-name person is talking about is the free plus shipping. That's the only way that I've offered it. Um, and it hasn't shipped yet. It hasn't shipped yet, but it is coming um, soon. Uh, this is the, the brand new cover. We just ironed this out uh, week, ten, 10 days ago. I don't know, maybe a week ago. And then this right here, the interior of this book, um, I just got the finished completed files sent to me so that it can be printed. This was just sent to me last night. So this is, uh, we are on New Year's Eve. So it was sent to me the day before New Year's Eve. Um, it's finished. It is finished. So I'm pretty excited that it can now start to ship out. So sorry, no name or anyone else that has that same concern. Um, I'm giving it to you for free. So I can't, I don't think you can be too mad about that. <laughs> okay. John the Bard, John the Bard. Does anyone feel as though the algorithm for YouTube does not like older channels? This was the question from last week. I'm going to skip it because we had this question last week and I forgot to update it. Okay. Uh, Alina from USA. If people watching YouTube are not signed in most of the time, why subscriber count? Why does subscriber count matter for monetization? Okay. So in order to get your channel approved for monetization, you've got to have 1000 subscribers. And so she's asking, well, a lot of people that watch your videos aren't signed in most of the time. So why does that subscriber number matter? Um, regardless of whether that's, you know, if you you might need 3000 viewers in order to have 1000 subscribers, whatever that ratio works out to be, according to people that subscribe versus not subscribe, watching your videos. Uh, I, I do agree that there needs to be a, a benchmark to get it monetized. There are a lot of scammers that create YouTube channels to pretend to be somebody else. It's, uh, it's quite tragic and it's, it's crazy. Um, I, I think YouTube needs to do even more, but they have they have put some security in place to say, hey, we're not going to approve non-legit channels. Um, and even to an extent, like we're actually going to be paying you 55% of the revenue we receive, this advertising revenue. We're going to pay you 55% of that. We want to make sure that you're serious. We want to make sure that you can get to a certain level of, of momentum on your channel. Those are my opinions as to why that they've done it that way. Okay, six degrees. I don't know if that's your real name, and I like the, the spelling of six. My struggle is I'm not good at talking. In my head, it's so clear, but when it comes out, I'm just like crap. <laughs> okay, uh, I love it. I love it. I love the question. So um, here's my answer for you. Everyone starts out like crap at first, okay? But you, you practice. You get better at it. Um, I, I am pretty, I'm, I'm pretty reserved. I'm, I'm still not very dynamic. I, I talk with my hands now. I use voice fluctuation. I have facial expression, um, which, you know, 13 years ago, I remember when I was getting started recording myself on camera. Oh, it was, it was funny. It, I, would, I would think, okay, I've got to be high energy on camera. And I would deliver. Back then, I was using a teleprompter because I, I needed it. I really needed that crutch. And so I was reading from a teleprompter. I'd hit stop. I'd, then I'd review it. And I would watch myself. And I'd be like, I look like I'm just a talking robot without any emotion. Like, and that was me trying to be energetic. So, I mean, 
I'm not that I'm the example to look at in terms of, man, I'm so amazing on camera, but I'm comfortable on camera now. Um, and it just takes time. It, when you film 20 episodes in a day, by the end of the day, those episodes are a lot better than the first episodes. And when you do this, you know, every four weeks for a year, by the end of the year, those episodes, your performance, your delivery is way better than you were a year ago. So you gotta, gotta just practice. Okay, next question. What's your three best strategies for marketing and what are the three best strategies for getting more leads? Okay, so it's an interesting question because I've taught you my entire strategy and I'm, I'm pretty biased. Um, and I, I, I don't think those are two different questions. I think those are the exact same question. Uh, strategies for marketing and strategies for getting leads. Uh, the, the entire reason, well, okay. I was going to say the entire reason for doing marketing is to generate leads. However, there are, there are two versions. Two, you can also do it for brand awareness. So you're going to do marketing for brand awareness, and then you're going to do marketing to generate leads. Uh, small businesses, brand awareness makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, there's probably plenty of exceptions to that. Uh, but for the type of businesses that I work with, you're a real estate investing coach, you're a parenting expert, uh, you you teach how to do retreats, you teach credit repair. You know, my business, I'm a YouTube expert. Like, why would I... Like, why would I put up a billboard with my logo on it without, you know, that's brand awareness. Why would I spend millions of dollars for a Super Bowl commercial that, that talked about cleaning up the environment that really didn't talk about any of my products or my services? Company, big, huge companies do that for brand awareness, not for lead generation. Um, but otherwise, I think marketing and uh, lead generation are the exact same thing. Okay, so... What are my three best strategies? All right, I'll come up with three. Number one is the YouTube leaf strategy that I teach on this, this channel. Um, that's obviously my number one. It is the best source of lead generation. Um, okay, strategy number two, public speaking um, for free. Speak for free. Like a lot of my colleagues in the National Speakers Association they get paid to deliver keynotes. You know, some of them will get paid $10,000 to come and deliver a, a, an hour long keynote, 45 minute keynote. Um, I've got colleagues that get paid $25,000 to do a, a keynote. I do keynotes, I do uh, breakout sessions, um, and I don't uh, charge for those. Sometimes they'll pay for my travel uh, and lodging, transportation, um, but I've, I, I haven't actually ever gotten paid with the exception of they'll give me a gift, like, hey, here, thank you so much, here's a gift card. You know, it's a thank you, like a, a $50 gift card or something after that. So maybe I have been paid 50 bucks. But why do I speak for free? Um, it's because the same reason I do YouTube for free. I, um, I love being in front of a live audience. It is so fun. Uh, there are three people on the live stream right now. Welcome, thanks for being here. Hopefully this is helpful. When you speak in front of hundreds of people, especially hundreds of people in a room, I think the largest that I've spoken to live, two or 300, I don't know the actual head count, um, but when, when it's a large room and the room is packed and they're all paying attention to you and they all have questions, it's like, it is so much fun. And uh, it's lead generation. It is a great tool for lead generation. Okay, so yes, for three, what is the third? I was going to say nurturing your email list uh, to schedule strategy sessions. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say the book, the free plus shipping book um, is an amazing tool for lead generation. So you can use that in other ways. I use that on YouTube. You can use that when you're in a speak engagement, right? You speak and you just share information. You don't sell from the stage, but then you give away uh, your your book and say, hey, I will send you a copy of my book for free as long as you cover the shipping cost. But you can do that when you're interviewed on a podcast. You can do you know you can do that in so many different settings, giving away that book. So there we go. I, I gave you three. All right. Um, make this a little larger. How do you organize your spreadsheets and topic workflow from research to upload? Okay, how do I organize? my my spreadsheet so i use spreadsheets for um doing my keyword research i use a google doc for my outline so let me, let me let me just talk you through it um so how do i organize it 
Okay, so when I do keyword research, I have a Google spreadsheet. Um, I use the, the, and I can show you here. Um, I use this tool right here, the Google, no, it's not Google. It is not Google. Uh, I was gonna say the Google AdWords keyword tool, but uh, let me turn my, turn the picture back on. Uh, and yeah, that's turned off. Okay, good, just making sure you're seeing the right thing. Um, I was gonna say the Google AdWords keyword tool, I haven't used that tool for many, many years, but the keyword magic tool by SEM Rush, um, I use that tool to find leaf titles. Let me demonstrate, you guys, I demonstrate this all the time on my channel. But let's say I want to search for questions about hair loss. That's just what came to my mind. All right. And then I'm going to come over here, turn on the word count filter. And now I forgot the question. What is the question I'm, I'm addressing here? Oh, how do I organize? Okay. Um, okay. So I come in here and I do keyword research and I, I'll just comb through the list. And I guess, quite, oh, did I spell it wrong? Hair loss, there's only one question. What? Let me turn down this word count filter. Now it's surprising me. It's only one question. Are there any hair, hair loss? Am I spelling hair loss wrong? I obviously don't search for hair loss. You'd think I would, but I don't search for hair loss. Now I've got to go to Google here. Type in hair loss. Is it two words? It is. It's two words. Okay. So keyword magic tool. I'm gonna move myself down here so I can see this tool. Hair loss is two words. You learn something new every day. And you've learned that I don't care about hair loss, which is awesome, proof. Okay, and let's turn the advanced filter back to eight. I always do eight unless I have a reason to look otherwise. Okay, is hair loss a side effect of COVID? So, right? so I would comb through, you got a little bit too high a search volume there, but I would just select the ones and I'm just picking these random. Okay, so I would select those, then I hit copy. Okay, now it's in my clipboard and I take that over to a Google spreadsheet and I organize everything there. Um, let me actually show you one. Uh, who do I have in my history? Let's see. Um, wow, that's old. Sorry. All right, I'm not gonna be able to find it quick because it's on a different computer. So I'll just uh, talk to you. Um, I organize them. Like I, I put, I take an entire row on the spreadsheet and I shrink it down small and make it blue so that I, basically different sections. So if I type in hair loss, I put all the, the questions about hair loss. And then I put a blue line, scroll that up. Then I've got another topic. Let's say it's weight loss. And I put in all the questions about weight loss. So I just organize it. Hopefully that makes sense. You want to know how I organize things. Now, when I am ready to film those, I, I go through my spreadsheet and I pick 20 of those and I put them into a Google Doc and I outline it with bullet points, lots and lots of bullet points. So I have the, you know, number one, title number one, and then underneath that point one, point two, you know, I, I organize it. And then when the bullets go back out, you know, they're out dented, they take away the indent. Um, so I just use lots of bullet points and whatnot to outline all my talking points. I've shown you that on my channel, but hopefully that's what you're asking. Hopefully that's what you're asking from start to finish. Um, another, another thing I can share, we, um, when we film 20 episodes in a day, how we organize that on Dropbox is we create 20 different folders. So all the assets for video one go into folder number one. All the assets for video number five go into folder number five. So that way we can keep things organized. And then when I have my editing team, um, we use a, a project management tool called monday.com. Um, it's it's kind of like Trello. We used Trello many years ago where you, you can create a card and it will move from like, okay, step one, step two, step three, and you can hand it off to different people for different steps. But they will, they will say, okay, I'm working on video five. I can access the assets from folder five on Dropbox. And... Um, Hopefully that answers your question there. All right. So the next question from Teresa McGalliger in the USA. How do you grow your channel and audience when you have very few viewers and hardly any comments? Um, my leaf strategy. Um, I'm a broken record on this channel about that because that is the problem. All the other strategies that people teach 
they run into this problem when you when you are in the beginning and you have very few viewers or subscribers you don't have any comments you don't have any engagement on your channel you post a video even if it's amazing the most amazing content you put it on youtube and it gets crickets okay so that's why this strategy that i teach on this channel is so valuable all right fernando from super i don't know where super is it must be like uh not where but what maybe his website or his brand or something what is some data you wish you had but youtube doesn't provide and then how do you go about finding that data okay so i actually had to think about this one um because youtube provides a lot of data and i'm like they provide everything but what they don't provide is contact information they don't provide a uh, name like they provide their username, but not necessarily the person's name, their email address, their mailing address, their phone number, right? So th that's so. What do I do to go about finding that information? Well, you give away a lead magnet. We've talked about the free plus shipping book, or you can offer any type of download or any other type of, of valuable resource. This checklist, this shortcut, um, this you know hour-long training, uh, a. a you know, a, a mini course or something like that. You just basically say, hey, if you found value in this episode, I've got a free gift for you. Click the link below, right? And you tell them more information about it. Otherwise, why would they click the link if they don't know what that valuable resource is? But they click that link below, they go to your website and your website is where they put in their name and their email address. Or if they're doing a free plus shipping book, obviously they need their shipping address um, and whatnot and, and phone number. So that's how... I get the data that I'm missing. Everything else that I can think of, YouTube actually provides that. So hopefully um, that makes sense to you. Okay, it looks like we are done with questions. I'm gonna go back to the asknate.net spreadsheet. Nothing new, oh, there's one more, there's one more. Um, I'm gonna just read it to you, you're not gonna be able to see it. But Jen from Virginia, and I haven't censored this question, so let's see. Thank you for creating this 22-day tutorial. You're very welcome. By the way, one episode was pushed to Monday, so there's one more, uh, one more episode coming out. I've learned so much, and I'm excited to get started. If I had to quantify hours for creating 20 videos solo, using and let me, I have to wrap around the text here. Why is it not wrapping around? There we go. Um, so if I had to quantify, let me copy and paste. I'm going to copy and paste so you can actually see this question. And no, I can't do that because it's on my other computer. I can't copy and paste it. I'm so used to. All right, forgive me. Um, let me turn this off so you can just see me. And then um, let me read the question again. And I need to make it bigger on my screen so I can back up. Okay, that should do it. Almost. Okay. Okay, so she says. Um, if you had to quantify hours for creating 20 videos solo using an iPhone setup, what would be your estimate? Most likely I would outsource video editing. Okay, so I'll talk about both. Um, if you're filming with an iPhone, which is great, the camera on your iPhone, here's mine, iPhone 11, this camera. It's funny, people always make fun of me because I have a, on my case here. So this is the iPhone 11, right? But I, on my case, the, the magnet, the MagSafe battery pack, the iPhone 11 doesn't, it doesn't stick. It doesn't stick. So I, I glued it to my case. Anyway, back to the subject. iPhone 11, that's an amazing camera. It's an amazing camera. It's, um, what can I say? Like, I can't blur the background. Like, you know, the background is blurred uh, and it's autofocus. It's tracking me. So as I walk back here into the room, um, it focuses, you know, it, you can't do that on an iPhone. Um, but anyway, the iPhone is great. And if you're filming on your iPhone, then you've got iMovie. And editing becomes so easy. iMovie and Final Cut Pro are my favorite. Um, start with iMovie. You don't need to pay for Final Cut Pro unless you want to, unless you run into any limitations on iMovie. But start simple, and iMovie is fantastic. A lot of YouTubers, a lot of very successful YouTubers edit in iMovie. And so... Um, how many hours? Okay, so you've got, um, if you're outlining your content, that's typically four to six hours to outline on the high end. If you're, if you're taking more time than that, you're, put, you're, you're scripting it, you're wording it way too much. Um, 
typically for me, I, it's three to four hours to outline content for 20 videos. To film, it's a nine to five day. So filming 20 episodes is a nine to five day. If you're hiring somebody else, if you're hiring an editor, then you don't have to put any of your time. But if, if you need to train them, then, then that's a different story. So let's talk about if you're editing them yourselves, yourself <laughs> to, you know, if you have a 10 minute episode, how long is it going to take you to edit that video? Probably 30 to 60 minutes, um, depending on how many ums and uhs, depending on how complex you want to make it. Um, you know, 30 minutes to edit a 10 minute video because you've got to play it and figure out where you're going to cut it, um, you know, and cut things out and tighten things up and make a transition or put in this B roll um, or whatnot, you know, zoom in or, or whatnot. So 30 to 60 minutes per video. So that's going to be another. 10 to 20 hours if you're doing the, the editing. So, all right, if you if you had a three-fourths rotating areas in your home to film from, would that suffice for the first four to six months? Okay, I think I understand your question. Three or four, three or four rotating areas. So right now we're filming in, what do I call this room? I, I have a name for every room in my studio house here. The living room, the great room. I think I call this the front room. Front room, okay. So I'm in the front room now. I might have, I was in the, the living room with the fireplace behind me last week, I think. I was in the Florida studio house the week before that. I like to rotate just for variety, but here is the truth. Uh, you don't have to rotate at all um, for the results on your YouTube channel. You don't have to change it all. You don't have to change your outfit. You could look, this, this t-shirt, I was kind of, this is one of my favorite t-shirts. Uh, but when I looked at myself on camera, I'm like, it doesn't look so good on camera. I wore it anyway, uh, and I noticed my microphone is uh, now that I look at myself. Uh, I hope I'm sorry that if the audio was bad before, like this entire live stream, it should be better now. If it was bad before, okay. Um, outfits like you could wear the same outfit every time. Pick a good one. Like I would if I if if I had I'd pick probably a button down shirt, maybe a collar or something. I don't know um, something that that I. And you could wear that same shirt over and over and over and over. And you might get a comment about it, but that's the worst of it. And if you did get a comment about it, if it caused somebody to go down into the comments and say, hey, why do you wear the same shirt all the time? The more comments you get, the better your channel performs because YouTube sees that engagement. So the reality is you don't have to change the locations to get results. And why is that? Because we're, we're targeting people who've never heard of you before. So whether it's episode one, episode 50, episode 100, people are finding these episodes primarily and they've never heard of you before and they haven't seen your previous episodes. You build a relationship with them. They get value. They come back and they watch a second episode. They're probably not going to notice that you're wearing the same thing. Uh, third episode, they're still probably not going to notice. After a while, they start to notice, but that's not, they're not, um, they've already, they already like you. They're, they're not going to judge you based on that. They're going to kind of learn. Oh, that's efficient. Um, why do we change locations then? Why do we have, when we film 20 episodes in a day, we use four different outfits and four different locations. And then the next month, we typically have a different variety, different outfits and four, four new locations. Um, we do it because it is fun. Um, there are advantages to that. Um, you know, you, you, it builds a relationship. For people that do come back, uh, they get to see me in different settings. So they feel like, and, and it's maybe they can guess, ooh, where is Nate this time? Um, if I'm filming and I'm showing something a little bit um, more personal than than this front room, maybe you see the kitchen and, and you're thinking, ooh, is that where Nate prepares his meals? That's kind of a, a personal thing or a fireplace. Like, hmm, I wonder what it would be like to be in that room with the fireplace turned on. And I don't know, you just get a... Um, you get to feel like you know that person more because you've been, you know, if you're, if you're, if there's a ping pong table in the background, you can imagine me playing ping pong with my kids. Like we have a ping pong downstairs in the great room, but what you might not know, we've actually got like six different setups in that great room. Some that look like living room setups, some that look like the game room, some that look like a conference center. So it's like, I, I started out answering this question by saying you don't have to. Your channel will succeed if you don't, but there are some advantages to doing it. Okay, so um, is that enough? Will that suffice three or four areas that you rotate in your home? Absolutely, that'll totally suffice. 
Um, and then what are my thoughts about filming outside? Like filming outside is awesome. That was the final part of her question. Uh, and I, uh, your name is not on my screen. I want to, uh, Jen. So Jen from Virginia is the one that asked these questions. Um, what are my thoughts about filming outside? I love it. Now it, it's challenging because um, you have to, lighting always changes and audio is a big problem outside you. Um, when I say lighting, like I've got, I've got a couple lights, like I've, I'm really controlling the light here. <laughs> so this is, this is when I'm just using the ceiling lights and whatnot. I, I don't look very well lit. So I've got a, a Aperture 300D Mark II on this side, aiming at a V flat. We're only at, we are only at 5% on both of these. Let me turn the other one back on. So I've got 5% coming this way, 5% this way. Then I've got a 25% aiming up at the ceiling. I turned off the, the light in the room. Uh, I have a light here in the shadow. I, that's why, that's why I was like, my, the, the skin color, I had to warm up the color. It's because I have that light on there. It's like a big chandelier with one, two, three, four, five, six, with, not, well, one's burned out. Eight different light bulbs. That's why I was struggling with my skin color. <laughs> Watch this. I'll turn it off. Let's see. All right. Now I'm going to look. Yeah. That looks, I, I wish I would have known that when I, before I, anyway, I'll turn it back on because I have the camera set for that. So now what was I answering? Those answers. Filming outside. Okay, so you have you have to worry about the lights. And if sun goes behind clouds, I mean, the light's going to change. Um, it's really hard to film in direct sunlight. Like, if the sun is right there, I'm going to be squinting. But I'm going to I'm going to look great. But I'm going to be squinting. But if the sun is back there, I'm going to be washed out. So you typically film in a shadow. Um, so let's say you're under a pavilion or something like that. I'm just speaking from a lot of experience. If you're filming underneath a pavilion or in the shade and maybe you've got a reflector and you can get some good light on you. Um, but then the background is the background in the shade as well. If not, it's going to be washed out. Um, so those are the, the, the challenges of working outside. Um, sometimes what I love, uh, and we don't do this as often, just um, here in, you know, we have changing weather and the outside at this studio house inside, we've got over 7,000 square feet of filming space. Outside, I'm either disturbing or annoying the neighbors, um, you know, in this neighborhood or out back. It's really noisy because it's by a busy street. So we don't, we don't, haven't filmed outside here. Um, in, we do a lot in the Florida studio house. We go out by the pool. There's actually a lot more options in the summertime. It is way too hot. Anyway, um, with Paul Jenkins, I'll use him as an example. Um, before we had the studio house, he films here now, but we used to film at his office. And we would, we didn't really have a whole lot of options. We would change a couple different angles in his office or film out in his, in his lobby. So kind of three different inside locations that we would rotate between. Um, but to mix things up, um, we would film the intros and outros outside. So we would go to a, there was a park nearby with a pavilion, or we'd go like kind of in the shade of his building, aiming at a, at some pine trees or, or this, uh, precast concrete decorative wall um, and blurred it. You know, we'd blur the background. And so the this opening of the video, he'd say, hey, welcome back. Today we're talking about how to get kids to listen without yelling. Uh, sorry, he'd give a better intro than that. I was just, I don't know. And then it would go into his office and he would teach. And then it would go back outside for the call to action. So um, I have done an all-day filming. We got a photographer pass at Thanksgiving Point. Uh, the gardens. They have a, I don't know how many acres, but many, many acres of beautiful landscaped gardens of all different types. And you can get permission to go. It's like a hundred bucks for the day, which that's pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, but we, we had to, you know, just navigate those things. We went at a time where uh, like on a weekday where there wasn't going to be as many crowds. You have to pay attention to weather. It did rain. It did rain. So we actually had to take shelter for anyway. So you have to those are the, the pros and cons and disadvantages and advantages of outdoor filming. So anyway, um, that's it. That's for, I might as well go check for questions one more time. That was the last, that was the last question. So I will wrap up our live stream with one more thing. Just talking again about, no, not this, not keyword research, but, and I'll just go, um, this book, there have been delays, uh, but I have a brand new cover design, as you can see. I want to put myself back on the screen here. Um, hold on, there we go. Um, there have been delays, but it is here. The book is 100% complete. The files have been delivered to me. 
And now it's going to the printing uh, company. Uh, I'm using Amazon Direct Publishing um, for that. And so these will start shipping out. I don't know how long it takes for the things to gear up, but I'm going to get it ready uh, early this coming week. So shipment of these books. Now you can get it for free. You pay the, the printing and shipping cost, which is less than 10 bucks. None of that comes to me as profit. This I'm giving it to you for free. You just cover the shipping costs. All right. Um, so this is the cover. And here's uh, the interior. I'm really excited. Um, this is, by the way, I have to tell you one more thing. The audiobook, the audiobook files were delivered to me Thursday. So just two days ago, the audiobook, oh, I, I did not do the audio myself. I hired somebody else and it turned out so good. Um, I, I, I've listened to five chapters now. I'm reviewing it before I, I send it to Audible. Um, I finished, I was finishing chapter four just here in the studio house. No one else was here, but I exclaimed out loud, this is the best audiobook I've ever listened to. It's my own book. I'm kind of biased, but I'm like, I'm so proud of this thing. It's been a two year, two year project, a lot of work and not just, uh, we started it two years ago and we're finally finishing. It's like, I've been working on it actively. I've invested at least $65,000 into the creation of this book. So I hope you love it. You can go to Nate's youtubebook.com and order your copy for free as long as you cover the shipping costs. Anyway, um, I love all the questions. Keep them coming in and we will see you next time.